So I got a bit of an idea. The other day I was thinking about cars I've owned over the years. I've been wanting to get something new, something like sporty. I want to have like a midlife crisis. You're old. And I was like, you know, I used to own a 2003 Lancer Evolution 8 and I absolutely loved it. I wish I would have kept it. And I was like, maybe I'll get one of those again. And I, I looked at the prices of them. Oh no. And yeah, they're, pff, they're, they're more now than what I paid for it in like 2007 or something like that. But either way, I was, Thinking about that car, and it had no like cruise control, no fancy electronics. It was essentially just a f turbocharged four, four cylinder with a five speed and all wheel drive, and it was just a ton of fun. But in that car, right behind the uh, shifter was a button that had a little picture of an intercooler on it, and it said manual and automatic. And when you pressed manual, it just sprayed water onto the intercooler, and if you hit automatic, it did the same thing, but the ECU controlled it. Now, air can only do so much for, for cooling, and under heavy, heavy loads or hard acceleration, or just, just like if you're running a rally in an Evo 8, the air coming out of a, a compressor in a turbo is actually quite hot. Say it's like 80 degrees outside. Well, the if you're running like 14 pounds of boost, the air coming out of the compressor is gonna be like 230, 260, and you know, like I said, air can only do so much to cool it down. So the idea was that you would spray some water on the intercooler, that water would absorb some of that heat. And as it evaporated away, your inlet air temperature would drop even more so you can make more power. And that got me thinking, you know, we run radiators on our computers and stuff. So I wanted to see if I could take like an AIO to cool a CPU. And if I ran the CPU under load and saturated that radiator, if I sprayed a little water on it, if <laughs> would, it, would it make the CPU temperatures go down? Would I be able to get any more performance out of it it's gonna make a bit of a mess, but that's what we're gonna try to do today. This is a little, this is gonna be our, our water cooling spray tank, which is just a little pump that I use for my smoker. But this is what we're gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to design something that we can mount that little spray nozzle right in front of our radiator, and I'll try to find a good fan to put a lot of airflow over it, and we're gonna run a stress test, hit it with a little bit of water, and see if we get any more performance out of our CPU. Should be fun. Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN service that provides safe and private connections between your devices and the web, encrypting your personal data and online activities. This Halloween season, there's nothing scarier than advertisers hoovering up all your data just to haunt you with advertisements. With Surfshark VPN, you can protect your digital identity and browse privately as Surfshark VPN encrypts your internet activity. Another favorite of mine and many others is getting access to different content libraries that you might be geo-blocked from in your area. With Surfshark VPN, you can go anywhere and see anything. Surfshark users can use the service on an unlimited amount of devices and support is available 24 seven and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Regardless of your use case, Surfshark VPN has the tools to make surfing the internet safer and more secure. Purchasing a 24 month Surfshark plan is one of the best options for VPNs you can find. Surfshark will also give you three extra months if you scan the QR code or click the link in the description below and use my code hardware. All right, things have already changed a little bit. The AIO I was gonna use, the 120, is the one we're currently using on the fan showdown. And when I put it on here, I must have poked a hole in it at, at some point in our adventures because it was cavitating pretty bad and I couldn't get the air out of the, the pump housing. The temperatures were okay, but I just, I just didn't trust it that much. So instead we're gonna use the, my go-to EK water block with a custom loop and a 240 radiator. We're still gonna just use one fan, this T30 Fantex. And I need to make an adapter to mount this single fan to this 240 with our spray nozzle somewhere in between. And then we can run a water line to it, to our little water jug, and see if we, uh, see if we can get anything out of this whole Frankenstein setup. So let's do that.
so things are off to a, a rough start. You can see that there's no more graphics card because uh, yeah, the, the old GTX 1080 that I've had for a long time that I've totally disrespected just kind of stopped working. So that's, I, that's not a huge deal. We don't need it. We're not running anything graphics wise, but uh, other than that, we're not getting any heat soak, which is very strange. I even upped the, uh, the voltage and well, I upped the V-Core and I upped the, the frequencies to 4.9. I think I'm around 1.45 on the V-Core just to get more heat in there. But where did my screen go? Anyway, uh, I was trying to run OBS while it was running the stress test. Probably crashed out. Are you sure about that? But what I'm trying to say is that this isn't getting hot. The water's not getting hot. We got flow. The only thing I can think of is that this block that I've had for many, many, many years is probably very corroded. And rather than, you know, take it apart and clean it, I am going to switch to this 240 mil AIO. We're going to try to heat soak this and see if we can see some sort of action. So I'll be, I'll be back. So I had to open it up and check it and yeah, that could be a problem. It's almost completely, completely blocked off. But you know, rather than clean it, we'll just, we'll just go the other one. We've been running for quite a bit. The radiator is kind of heat soaked. It kind of looks cool on the flare because you can see the water path within the radiator. One side is definitely hotter than the other. We're, we're throttling a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and spray it and see if we can see anything. It's not actually looking too bad. The throttling has kind of gone down quite a bit. Temperatures are in the 80s-ish now. Let's give her another. A little moisture got through, but not really that much. And surprisingly, the tempers, temperatures actually dropped a lot more than I, than I thought. I thought we were going to be able to see way more on the thermal, and we could definitely see the effect on the thermal camera. The mess that it created is really not that, not that bad. You know, some of the water is hitting the fins and running down out the bottom. That's just too much. I, I sprayed too much. But for the most part, a lot of it's just getting caught in the fins and then evaporating with some of that heat energy, as you can see in our graph. And although this was, oh, this, this was a little, it took a lot of work going through, uh, different setups trying to find something to work having graphics card poop out uh, I did notice that when I put this down I hit the cord and unplugged the monitor so that's that uh, I don't know about the GPU it served me well over the years but it's it's gone but it's cool to see what the effect was kind of on that old Evo that I had and what the effect would be if you were actually to run this on like a water-cooled PC now spraying water near your electronics is not really something anybody's going to do to get the benefits of a little bit extra cooling under high loads. But with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of design and uh, some clever engineering, I'm sure you could fit something into, into a system where your radiator could be sprayed with water and then the excess water collected so it didn't get into your system. And you could have a little bit of a bonus cooling power when you, when you needed to, if you're doing like a big render or something. So I hope you enjoyed it. Ah, it's, it, was, it was something, but it's always fun to do little tests like this. If you have an idea, maybe you can think of something else that we do in the automotive world that you're wondering if we could bring it over to the PC world. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys all for watching. I'll see you next time.